The selfie used to betray the truth. Now, the man smiling next to the German chancellor says that when the world sees this photo, it sees a terrorist. Well, tonight, a legal fight against fake news. A refugee takes Facebook to court. I'm Brent Goff in Berlin, and this is The Day. Two years ago, a grateful refugee clenched this moment with the German chancellor. A selfie that is now evidence in a David versus Goliath court case. One man taking on Facebook and fake news. They say I'm a terrorist. It's not true. I live in Berlin and anyone can contact me. They've changed my entire life. Also tonight, the author of Bears in the Streets tells us why Russia remains a riddle in the West. Do you respect Putin? I do respect him. Do you? Why? why? Well, I respect a lot of people. What you heard there was a determination to, to, to attempt to deal with the world as it is, to start afresh with Putin and to start afresh with Russia. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. We got a lot of killers. Why well, you think our country's so innocent? Also coming up, touchdown for which side of the aisle? The political message punting in those Super Bowl TV ads. More on that in just a moment. We begin the day with battles just begun. Today it became official. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel wants to stay in power. She'll ask the country for a fourth term on election day come September. Merkel says this will be the most difficult campaign of her life. Never before has she faced such resistance from within her own party. Merkel's open-door policy for refugees and the influx of a million migrants, they all created a lasting feud in her party as well as within the country. And that brings us back to the infamous selfie. Now, the Syrian refugee who took that photo says his new life here in Germany started going downhill once Facebook came into the picture. Today was the first hearing in his lawsuit, which claims Facebook refused to remove fake news posts linking him to terrorist acts. How much social responsibility is there in social media? Everything started with this selfie. It shows 18-year-old Syrian refugee Anas Madomani with the most powerful woman in the world. The photograph was taken when German Chancellor Angela Merkel visited a refugee shelter in Berlin. Modamani had just arrived in Germany and was full of confidence. Today, almost one and a half years later, he is disillusioned. His picture has been misused numerous times and spread online. Since 2015, my picture has been used three or four times for fake news stories. The first time, my picture was linked to the terror attack in Brussels. The last time they said I was involved in a crime was when attackers set fire to a sleeping homeless man in a Berlin subway station. All these allegations are absolutely untrue but they were published on Facebook again and again. Anas Modamani and his lawyer reported the images and asked Facebook to remove them. The company says it did. We are sorry to hear about Mr Modamani's concerns with the way some people have used his image. We have already quickly disabled access to content that has been accurately reported to us by Mr Modamani's legal representatives, so we do not believe that legal action here is necessary or that it is the most effective way to resolve the situation. But for Anas Modamani, that's not good enough. His lawyer says his image is still being misused on the platform and calls for a precedent-setting decision. Facebook rejects the idea of paying any compensation, but Anas remains upbeat. I feel really good because my lawyer did very well. And they lied. They said they deleted the photo altogether. But it's still online and can be seen at any time. 
So we have a small chance now. I'm satisfied at this point, and I'm not worried. An agreement between Facebook and the young plaintiff has not yet been reached, but he hopes the courts decide in his favour. Yeah, there's a lot at stake here for Facebook. We want to pick through the issues here now. I'm joined by Teresa Locker. She reports for the online tech magazine Motherboard. Teresa, it's good to have you back on the show. What issues are at stake here in this case? Okay, so the Syrian refugee who uh, takes Facebook, Facebook to court wants Facebook to remove defamatory posts. He's been linked to everything bad that has supposedly happened with refugees in Germany in the last year, and his picture has been used for that. Facebook, on the other hand, disagrees because they say these pictures don't violate their terms of, con uh, their terms of uh, user content. Okay, because they maintain that they are not a media company, they're not producing content, they are simply providing a platform for that content. Right. Uh, how long is that argument going to hold water? Well, uh, <clears throat> the last time around when the lawyer of Anas uh, Muramani, the Syrian refugee, filed a preliminary injunction uh, in December, Facebook um, delayed the entire case yet again mm -hmm. uh, because they said they don't understand German and that claim was filed in German. That argument you is. You mean the documents course, were in German? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Okay, and, and they mean, couldn't translate it. They, Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. their terms of use are in German. Uh, the entire Facebook page is translated to German. So this time around, they probably won't get away with that line of argument anymore. Right. I mean, they're all over the world. So obviously, they're dealing in lots of languages. Um, what chances would you say then the, that the refugee has in actually winning this case? It's very unclear. I mean, the, uh, it's the first time, first of all, that Facebook is actually on trial in Germany. So it is a very interesting case. And um, the chances of him winning, the implications could be huge, of course, because it would mean that Facebook has to change their business tactics entirely in Europe or their business practices. And they, it would mean that they actually have to uh, imply, uh, apply the mechanisms to remove flag content because they've been lagging behind in that. And, and I mean, we also have to say they have been taking steps, right? I mean, yeah. there there is a coordination, for example, with an investigative news operation here in Germany to filter, to find fake news, for example. They, they've hired some journalists in the U.S. to help be editors. But with those steps, isn't Mark Zuckerberg admitting what we're talking about right now? Yes, right. And uh, also there is, a, there is an argument that they've been using, which is also not very watertight, which is, they say, it's really hard to find manipulated pictures mm -hmm. on Facebook um, because in Europe it's not allowed to uh, use facial recognition techniques. But in the last transparency report, uh, Facebook uh, admitted or showed or actually bragged with uh, removing a picture from the Bataclan incident from within the uh, the club okay. where people got shot during a terrorist attack. And mm -hmm. they said they removed 32,000 instances of that in France within a certain period of time. Right. Nobody knows how, but um, if these mechanisms are in place, there's no reason why they couldn't be used. What um, repercussions could this have for other social media companies? I'm thinking of Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I reckon that uh, <clears throat> probably the company or that social network that get, had, gets a handle on this best is probably going to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so the user bases, they can change really quickly. Yeah. It's probably also smaller or easier the smaller a company is at this stage of the game. All right. Teresa Locker with Motherboard. Teresa, as always, thanks for coming in and being on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, this court case does not mark the first time that we have heard calls for Facebook to take more responsibility for the content on its platform. I'm joined tonight by Espen Egel Hansen, the editor-in-chief of the Often Polsten newspaper in Norway. Mr. Hansen, good evening. It's good to see you back on the day. We appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight. You, were, you. you were our guest here last year. I think it was September when, when you and some others in your country, including the Prime Minister of Norway, um, accused Facebook of, of censorship and trying to edit out history. Now, you wrote an open letter to Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. We're taking a look at that right now. And you demanded that he accept his role as the super editor of the world. Did 
you get a answer to your letter or did your letter lead to any change? Uh, well, I didn't get um, an answer from Mark Zuckerberg himself, but I've uh, gotten several uh, answers from uh, from Facebook. And uh, some changes uh, happened. Uh, they changed their rules of on what they call newsworthy content, pictures. And today they will allow uh, pictures content, even if it is in breach of their uh, rules. Uh, also, I think there has been a change in how they they are much more active in participating today. They reach out to the news business and so on, and, and, and they show some willingness at least to discuss and maybe f try to find some solutions. So something has happened. Something has happened, uh, but do you, are you convinced that Facebook is accepting the reality as it is, that it, it, it is part of a content, a media company, it is providing content, or do you, do you still see Mark Zuckerberg you know, trying to, to fight the future, if you will? Well, I think there is maybe an awakening within uh, Facebook. I think they understand they are not a pure technology company like a telephone company uh, anymore. On the other hand, they are not a traditional media company. They are something in between, but their problem, the core here, that you have, have to understand is that Facebook's algorithms are all designed to drive engagement. Right. That's what they do. We have our friends and they want as much activity as possible. Uh, and that's what the algorithms do. So they don't really want to uh, edit, be editors, but that's an effect of their uh, algorithms. and. If they do too much with the algorithms, they also hurt their business model. I think right. that's the core problem. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, they want to spread the news, whatever the news is, even, even if it's bad news and, or if it's fake news. Um, let me ask you, Mr. Henson, uh, here, here in Germany, lawmakers are preparing legislation to force Facebook to uh, remove hate speech from its web pages within 24 hours of it appearing or they could possibly face fines. Um, has Norway discussed taking a step like that? Well, yes, there are uh, there are dis discussions uh, like in uh, in uh, in G in Germany. Uh, again, I, I I think it's a very good uh, discussion. It's not really easy to handle. I think um, a famous case, one that becomes big, it it is possible to handle like the one with uh, Mudamani. But we have to realize that there are millions and millions of small cases, and they cannot all be reported, and this is also part of the problem here. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, fake news these days, and, and I think probably since you and I last spoke on the show, you know, the evidence that fake news is being consumed is now overwhelming there's a fear that people are almost becoming numb to the difference between what's real and what's fake. Are you noticing that there um, in people who consume your product? I mean, is the news diet, is it changing because of fake news? Uh, I, I, think, I think it is, but I also think we are experiencing now a contra-reaction that uh, there is today a greater understanding that you need uh, traditional uh, media, uh, that someone you can relate to, someone that are responsible, say, you are, say that you are uh, responsible. And so th there is also that uh, happening. But definitely what we see all over the world, that someone has cracked the code of how to explore Facebook's algorithms for the use of propaganda mm. and just spreading of uh, fake information. Indeed. All right, Mr. Espen Egel Hansen, the editor in chief at the Often Posten newspaper in Norway. Mr. Hansen, again, thank you very much. We appreciate you taking the time to be on the day tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you.